this is the email that you yeah, uh, that I received, received mm -hmm. from the plaintiff. And I'm reading through it, and, and I compared it to your statement to us that you wrote and signed. The first thing I was looking for was to see if what you had said about your waiting time was indicated in the email, and there was no indication of how long you waited. Yeah, I don't know how in, exactly in the email. how long. Now I this waited. is the day after, and the second thing was there was no indication that the person offered you a gift card. Right in here. In your email, you just say that she. Uh, this is part of it. So she goes to the register and pulls the entire cash tray out and sets it on the counter. Then she slowly starts messing around with the register obviously deliberately being slow to be a B word to me. She then refuses to give me the money back. So after your employee stole my money, I left. Right. Your employee who just robbed me for $5 told me to have a nice day. You didn't mention that anything about a gift card. No. You, That's not what I wanted. I just oh, mentioned that you she feel that she was taunting back. you. Oh, she definitely was. When she looked back at me and gave me that look, when I said, hey, just give me my money back, I, I got to go. Then where she, right is, there it started. Where is this young woman? She didn't want to come because she had dealt with him on the first day and her family advised her that it probably wasn't the best. She didn't even give me the coffee. She put it to the side of the coffee machine, then walked up to me and gave me this look and went, now you can get it. So she was definitely being that. She was doing it on purpose. And I just was like, okay, just give me my money back. And then when she knows that she's not giving my money back when we walk over there and then takes the tray out. And I'm like, just give me my $5. She's still not saying anything. And then she's fumbling around in there. I don't know what she's doing until she goes, we give gift cards instead. And I'm like, oh, no. We Do you open. doubt that that happened? I believe what he wrote in his email was accurate. OK, I have a question. You said that your employee said that the plaintiff didn't want to wait three minutes. Yeah, they take about like two to three minutes to okay. make a latte. Because it's just espresso and steaming milk. She also informed you that she did offer to give the plaintiff his money back. Yes. But you also testified that she had no authority to do that. She could have. I mean, if he was being that aggressive, she could have given the $5 and just told me, hey, I did. I... She could have, but you just told us that she was instructed. She wasn't authorized unless there was a manager mm -hmm. to authorize a cash refund. You told us we don't give refunds unless you're authorized to give it. You technically aren't, she technically isn't allowed to. However, she could have opened the cash store because there's just a key in it. And, and she knows this? $5. She knows this? My staff know that, yes. How many people were there that day, sir? I've seen three employees. There's one tall guy. He was stocking shelves in the back, going back and forth. And then the woman I dealt with and then the new girl she was supposed so to So what pay. she should have done is given him his money back, even though she felt like she wasn't authorized to do so. Yes, she should have, yes. Do you have any more questions? Because no. I'm... Okay, we're good. All right, we're going to excuse both parties while we deliberate in this matter. Thank you both very much. Thank you. This courtroom is now in recess. What's interesting about this case is that I believe yeah. that the plaintiff really experienced a sort of passive-aggressive employee. Yeah. But I also believe that the plaintiff was also aggressive in just his demonstration today. I mean, his tone was up, he was super defensive, he talked over me, and I felt like, okay, if you can do that to a judge, then you certainly did that to a barista. Anyways, I say all that to say, he's owed the $5. It's just basic common courtesy, customer service. Him going to <laughs> wherever this cafe was, 120 miles from where he lived, is insanity. So uh, $5, at least for me, uh, in favor of the plaintiff. I could join you in the, the $5 defendant, verdict. And the defendant said that case, she was still willing you. to give the $5. Yes. So give the $5. I would give him the $5. Maybe he'll go back for coffee some other time. I have so much trouble <laughs> sending a message to people that this is the way to resolve a $5 dispute. You want to give him nothing. Yeah. I believe he failed to mitigate damages and failed to take the appropriate step to get his $5 back. I think if he had just been a reasonable person who wasn't set out to make this the trial of the century, it was very obvious the defendant would have made sure he got his $5 back. So I'm going to dissent, understanding that I'm in the minority. Okay, so we, we have a verdict with a dissent. We do. Okay.